Good morning everyone, Glenda Mollett here and I'm in my craft room stamping with you today and with the fall fair as well. Um, it is Friday, September the 11th and our local fall fair is happening this weekend. Of course we can't get together and do all of the normal stuff that we do. So it's gone virtual for part of the events this year. And I get a chance to do some stamping with all of you. So I'm going to, um, I've just refreshed my computer, making sure that I'm oriented properly. That's awesome. Okay. So this is not the card we're going to make today. This is one I made um, yesterday on one of my Facebook lives. Good morning, Valerie. Thanks for joining me. So I'm going to put a link of to this video on my Fall Fair page as well, just so you can watch it there. So we're going to make um, a casual stamper card today. There's three levels of card making. There's beginner, casual, and avid. And during the next today and tomorrow, I'm going to be showing you all different levels. So the one we started out with that I showed you this one. This is an avid stamper card. So there's lots of die cutting and coloring and cuteness to it. The one we're going to make today steps it back a bit and um, you can make this card with very few supplies. So we have a card base. Now, the normal card base is a half a sheet of eight and a half by 11 inch paper. So you get eight and a half by five and a half. Then you score it at four and a quarter and fold it in half. So you can have a hot dog oriented card or you can have a hamburger oriented card. Then we have a piece of Whisper White that's five and a quarter by four and that's going to go on the inside of the card when we get this, when we do the stamping. The only other items we're going to use is a piece of five by three and three quarter inch Whisper White. Then a piece of, I believe this is three and a half by four and it's going to layer there like that. We're going to wrap some pretty ribbon around. This one is Old Olive on one side and Pretty Peacock on the other. So we're going to use the Pretty Peacock side. And then we're going to stamp a sentiment at the bottom that says Happy Birthday. Like that. So we're going to get started. The first step is to put some adhesive on the back of your designer paper. I'm using Stamp and Seal, which is a runner. That's what it's called. And you just run it along the cards, along your paper like this. And you want to make sure that you get your adhesive into all of the corners. Because if it's going to start letting go, it's going to let go in the corners first. So this, making sure that I have it the right way up, I'm going to attach it to the Whisper White piece that's five by three and three quarters. Of course, it's now stuck to my fingers. There we are. So that's how easy that is. And now you've got your card started and I've got mine crooked. So I'm going to see if I can pull it up enough to straighten it out because Sometimes it just doesn't always work out the first time, right? It's coming. It's slow. But if I go any faster, then I'll rip my cardstock. Yeah, I could have just left it crooked. You know me. This happens all the time. And it just shows you that I'm only human. My cards are not always perfect, so I'm just trying to straighten it out a bit. There we go. And we just put it back down again. There, that's better. Okay, so now we need to um, wrap our ribbon around here like this to give it a little bit of um, added texture. And I'm going to use the Pretty Peacock side. So run adhesive. Uh, along the back side right at the edge and then you place your ribbon where you want it 
and just fold it back so that it grabs onto the the adhesive like that and don't pull it too tight you don't want it to bend your card and fold it back and then it hits the adhesive then I'm going to use my grid paper to make sure it's even and this side is right on that dark line now can you see that let me move it up a bit it's right on that dark line but if you look up here it's not so I just lift the ribbon slide it over till it hits that dark line and attach it on the back again there we go now we need to put more adhesive on my adhesives coming off the roller need to take more put more adhesive and you go right over top of your ribbon so that it doesn't move and once you've done this adhesive underneath and adhesive on top your ribbon will never fall off and it will never move and you notice I'm not doing a bow because you don't need bows all the time okay now we're just going to layer that onto the card front There we are. And make sure it's well stuck down. That's basically the card. Now we're just we'll just use some pretty peacock, which is the same color as the um card base is, and I'm going to stamp happy birthday right onto the card base. No extra cardstock required. Let's see if I can do this without getting my head in the way. And you put it down and then you just rub your finger over top like this and that transfers the ink and you have a perfect stamp every time so that's all there is now I do have some bling to add but we're going to stamp the inside first and the envelope and then we'll add the bling so I have a piece of paper under here that I call my dirty paper so that it doesn't get my grid paper dirty and I can do some half on half off stamping. So the card is oriented like a hot dog. We're going to start out with this uh, leaf and some just jade ink, which is the lighter color that's in there. And I'm pulling the colors right out of the car out of the designer paper. It's no need to um, no need to shake, scratch your head to figure out what colors because they all come right from the right from the um, designer paper. So I'm just holding that and rubbing it gently to transfer the ink. There we go. So I'll do the same thing on the envelope. Just right here, like this. Okay, now that we'll let that dry <clears throat> and I'm going to switch from Just Jade back to Pretty Peacock again and I have another stamp that's almost the same shape well it's the same shape as some of the little puffball things in there some of them are elongated but it's very much the same and this is Pretty Peacock so it's a little bit darker than Just Jade and I'm just going to put one of these in the middle like that kind of like a collage and I'll do the same thing on the inside piece like that there we go and now just for a little bit of interest I'm just going to add some up on the top just to make it a little bit different. All right, I'll get rid of this dirty paper so you don't have to look at that anymore. Put some adhesive on the back. Oops, must be getting to the end of my adhesive. Oh well, we'll just switch to the next one. 
this is stamp and seal plus then it's a bit st more sticky and you don't need to use as much of it as the stamp and seal you do now this is called double-sided tape runner and this just goes inside like this and see how nicely the the colors coordinate with the cardstock isn't that pretty so there we are and there's the envelope so let's add some bling because I I think that a card is never finished until you put bling on so this is called a wink of Stella it's a clear gel brush um, or a clear glitter brush and you just go over top of wherever you want to highlight with it and it just it adds glitter but not color and you can see that I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm just doing kind of picking and choosing. So I'll try and see if I can get it in the light there. Can you see the, the bling on some of those petals? It doesn't take much to add bling. Okay, so now I have holiday rhinestones that come in a variety of colors. And I'm thinking that... The green might work, but we're going to try. I'm just going to pick up one of the green ones and we'll put it. And you always put your um, your bling on in threes or fives because you want it to be uneven so that it's pleasing to the eye. So there we go. Now you have a, a beautiful hand stamped greeting card to give out. And this one you could use masculine or feminine. So I have another one for you today and that didn't take too long. Although I did have my pieces already cut out. It, it only took like 10 minutes to create that card. Now this stamp set also comes with some um, dots. So if you wanted, we could go back and add some, some dots around here. And for that, I'm going to get my Sahara Sand ink pad, which it's just a really nice light neutral color. And we'll just add a few dots because we can. And see what it does? It just kind of highlights your image a bit. I should have done this before, but sometimes I forget. There we are. So it just adds a little, little bit of a finishing touch. Just elevates it ever so slightly from being Yes, that's a card to, oh my God, what a gorgeous card. Here we go. All right. So that there's the first card that we did. And now I have another one for you. Just let me. Let me get myself organized here. I put my rhinestones back in the wrong spot, of course. They go in the in that one, not the other one. Okay, so I'll just leave this off to the side here so you can have a look at it while I'm making the other one. Now, the supplies that I used on that is the Forever Fern stamp set. And you can use it by itself, or you can use it with the Forever Fur Flourishing dies that actually die cut the images. And the Happy Birthday came from Rustic Retreat. And I like this stamp set because it has Christmas, it has Way to Go, it has Birthday, it has Thinking of You, and Thank You. It's a well-rounded stamp set. Okay, let's get the inky ones out of the way so I don't get them all over my cards and we'll do the second card okay so for this one we're going to use Rococo Rose so we're going with a totally different color palette 
and make this, this one's going to be a little bit more feminine. And I'm using the Tasteful Touches stamp set. We're going to use this and we're going to use that. All right. Get stuff out of the way here. I need my blocks. So we're going to use, we're going to use, where is it? There it is. Oh, there's that. And I might, I might end up using this. I don't know yet. We'll see how the card progresses. Okay, so we're going to have, this time we're going to have a Whisper White card base. And then we're going to layer, it's going to fit, go this way. Oops. And we're going, and then we have a piece of Whisper White for the inside as well, just like we did for the other one. I always add a piece on the inside. It, it helps to balance your card. A piece of Rococo Rose is going to lay like that. And then we have a piece of designer paper that we're going to add on the bottom after we do some stamping in the background. And then a piece of lace and a piece of ribbon. Then we're going to stamp on this piece of white and it's going to go here. And then um, this is going to be the sentiment. We're going to stamp the sentiment on a totally separate piece right on for this card all right get my pieces out of the way and we're going to do some stamping so this designer paper is too long I'm going to cut it off because I want it to go right from edge to edge and I always start with something that's a little bit bigger than um, what I need so I can cut it back I'm going to do stamping so that it kind of comes out of behind here and just do a couple of random ones. So that's why I marked the pencil mark there so I would know where <clears throat> to keep my stamping above that, that line. And we're going to do some tone on tone stamping. So we're going to use Rococo Rose ink on top of Rococo Rose cardstock. Good morning, Claire. I'm glad you could join me. Yes, Valerie, I love this designer paper. It's good for masculine. It's good for feminine. So we're just going to add a little bit of textural interest. And I'm going, I'm moving the stamp so that it's not all going the same way. There we go. All right, so now I will get my eraser out and remove those pencil lines so that they're not visible. There we are. Okay, so now we're going to attach this on the bottom here like that. Now this will lighten up as the ink dries. So I'm going to put adhesive on. Let's get rid of this. And to put see the back side our paper the papers are double sided so they're really cool doesn't matter which side you use well it does if you have depends on what cardstock you're using because I would not use this as the front with Rococo Rose I would dig out some um, petal pink there we are now I'm just going to line this up and I'm hoping to center as much as I can the uh, the ribs there there we go now to flip it over take your scissors and just cut the excess off like that Just be careful you don't cut the cardstock at the same time. Okay, had to get the tape off of my scissors. That's garbage. 
now we're going to do the ribbon and the lace and I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the other one just run a strip of adhesive down each side put the lace on where I want it and I want it to be just slightly above the edge of that designer paper wrap it around and and this is stretchy so just need to be really careful that I don't stretch it because it will see how it's pulling up in the center so I'm just going to turn it over and just release it a little bit so that it sits down a little bit better there we are okay so now I'm going to use my adhesive let's go from this edge go right up over top okay that's this is quicker this is just some different kind of tape that I'm using now we're going to put the the ribbon over top of it like that and I'm just covering up the very top edge of the lace with the ribbon now this ribbon has a has bling in it like I said you can never have too much bling on your card okay let's see if that how that looks okay so now I'm going, just going to use this tape again and I'll over top of the ribbon to hold it and then I will go back with my stamp and seal plus and get some right to the corners It's not cooperating this morning apparently there we go okay now I'm going to take the whole thing put it onto our card base like this so so far all I've used is ink stamp and pa stamps and paper you don't have to use adhesive or die cuts or punches or embossing folders or anything on all of your cards you can make pretty cards just with stamp ink and paper okay so now I'm going to take the flower and rococo rose oh, hi Carol welcome welcome okay so I'm just going to stamp the flower on a piece of whisper white and this doesn't have dyes so it'll be a little bit of fussing cutting but that's okay so while the ink is still wet take the um, wink of Stella and just pull the ink into the white areas just so it gives it a bit of color but you don't have to color it so this doesn't add any more supplies to to your card because we've used the clear Wink Stella brush that we used on our other card. And then just go over the center. So not only does this bring color into your your image, it also adds bling. Now you can also put a little bit of ink in the lid of your ink pad and pick up some ink with your wink of Stella and add color in with that if you don't get enough color coming through you have to be very very gentle and not use a lot of the ink see how it just it adds a little bit more a dimension to your stamped image just different ways to use the wink of Stella and your ink pads takes a little bit of time but that's okay it's always good to have a nicely finished card so I'm coming back tonight 
what time did I say? Six o'clock, I think. Hang on. Yeah, six o'clock tonight. And we're going to play with the um, September Paper Pumpkin Kit. Now this is a monthly subscription kit, or you can buy it individually from Stamping Up. And they carry, it comes once a month to your front door. And it make, makes cards or treat bags or whatever. I'm just adding a little bit more color to the center. There we go. And see how nice that is now? That's just added another dimension to your card. When I start these cards, I never know what they're going to turn out to look like. Because, well, I think I have an idea, and then when I, when I uh, start, things pop into my head. So I'm just going to fussy cut. And I'm, I like to leave a border, border around the outside of my image. Um, you don't have to. You can cut it right up close to the the stamp if you want. I find that I like the look with the with the border around it. And this takes a bit of time, but it's not too difficult. It just it's basically just cutting scallops. And when you're cutting like this, you always turn your paper, not your hand and not the scissors. Just so you get a nice smooth cut all the way around. There, we're almost done. So are you guys going to have a good day? Got big plans for the day. I um, it's lovely and sunny here in Port Alberni. It's been hitting thirty all week. Awesome day to be at the lake. I tend to hibernate when it gets that warm, but that's okay because that's why I have my craft room. Okay, there we go. So there's the image cut out. Let's bring our card front back in and we're going to put our image right here and I'm going to pop it up. These are called dimensionals. They're foam dots and you put them on the back of your stamped image like that and I'm just going to test it here to see where else I need them. I don't want to put them here because I don't I want it to sit naturally on top of that ribbon and not not um, pull the ribbon down. There, that's where I want it. There we go. Okay, so now you take the um, liners off. These have liners on the back of them, so now they're sticky on that side as well. And then you just put it down where you want it. There we go. Now the sentiment. Where did I put my piece of Whisper White for the sentiment? We can put the sentiment down there, or you can put your sentiment up there. I'm going to stamp the happy birthday again. I just have to clean it because it still has the uh, Pretty Peacock ink on it. And I want to stamp it in black just for some contrast. Because everything is kind of monotoned. And by adding black to the mix, you add a little bit of contrast. Oh, good. I was talking to Betty yesterday, and she said they're clo you're closed down now for a couple of weeks. So that's awesome. Give everybody a, a rest. There we are. Stamp the happy birthday. Now, shall we put it there? Or shall we put it there? I need to put some dimensionals on the back of this as well. And I have big ones, so we'll use the big ones. All 
All right, so now we can tell where we want it. I th I'm thinking right there is perfect. What do you think? Give me a yes or a no. While I stamp the, the flower on the inside. And the envelope. <clears throat> Need my dirty paper out again. Yes. Thanks, Val. Sideways. Okay, anybody else who's watching? Is that a good spot for the sentiment? Up there or down there? I like top. Valerie likes top. And one on the envelope as well. Sponge the edge. <laughs> oh, Valerie, you and your sponging. <laughs> I don't want to sponge. But I'll make you happy. I'll sponge the inside. How's that? I will sponge around this one. Thanks, Carol. I like it up there, too. And I like the, the contrast. So sponging just lightly going over around the edge using Rococo Rose. And I'm not going to color the flower on the inside. I'm just going to leave it the way it was. But I am going to right there in that corner just add a bit more so it looks like that flower is continuing. There we go, Val. Sponging just for you. Okay, let's put the adhesive on this and then we'll get it on inside. Oh, come on. Cooperate with me, would you? Ha uh ha. -huh. Maybe I'm just not doing it right. And I'll put down some down the edge. There we go. Get that inside and then we'll do the sentiment. There we are. Sentiment going on. And then we're going to put some bling on. Happy birthday. To you. There we go. Hey, rhinestones. Where are you? I put them so far away I couldn't reach them. Okay, now we just got some clear rhinestones to use on this one. And put one here, and we'll put one on the flower, and we'll put one down here. I think it needs more. I think we need to add a few. Because I can. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh oh, need one more. Can't have uneven numbers. No. Nope. Let's see. I think that one looks funny on there. When I put them on, I don't push them down. Then I can move them if I have to.
I know. The toughest part is figuring out where the bling is going to go. Okay, I'm thinking that I'm not liking that at all. So let's just take some off. There. I'm done. Voila. Yes. Voila, Carol. So there we are. Now they're where I want them, so I'll push them down to make sure they have good contact. So there we go. There's a couple of cards um, that require stamps, ink, and paper. A little bit of fussy cutting and some lots of bling. Two cards ready to go out in the mail, and it's only been 25 minutes. Okay, 35 minutes. Alrighty. Well, has anybody got any questions? If not, I'm going to finish. And if you have questions and you want to put them in the comments, I can answer them later. Have a drink of tea because my throat is getting froggish. And no frogs allowed in my craft room. Okay. Well, thanks for joining me today, this morning in my craft room. I'll be back at 6 o'clock tonight and we'll um, stamp with paper pumpkin kit. And then three times tomorrow at 10 o'clock, I'm going to do a Christmas poinsettia card. At 2 o'clock, I'm going to... Um, do another stamps ink and paper card and then at six o'clock three ways to do a card for beginning beginner casual and avid stampers now the one at two o'clock I might just change that I haven't decided yet um, I do have a card prepared that also use a bit of die cutting so we'll step it up a bit so I hope you can join me where are your water pens hiding? Okay, then. I'll be right over, Val. You'll have to wait till the 20th, but I'll come help you find them. <laughs> oh, gosh. Thanks so much, ladies. It was a joy stamping with you today. And I'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Have a wonderful day. Stamp and smiles. And bye for now.